Hey, hello class. I am very pleased to be joined by author and very smart cookie, John Samez. John, how you doing, bud? I'm doing great, Phil. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for joining us. I'd love to pick your brain about automated testing. You know, quite frankly, quite a bit about it, uh, more than I. And I think that my students would really benefit from your perspective from all your years in the field. Sure, yeah. Great. Uh, before we do that, though, can you tell us a little bit about your background and what you currently do? Yes, yeah, sure. So I was a software developer for about 15 years, and I worked on a, just a huge range of technologies. Uh, one of the things that, that I did focus on a lot in, in many of the places I worked on was automated testing, simply because uh, it, it's so important. I think a lot of people don't don't uh, really put as much emphasis on it that was that it's needed. And I really enjoy it. I think it's one of the, the very, most rewarding things that, that I did in the software development field. So I, di I did that for a long time, just a lot of different software development e efforts and then helped with automated testing. And then I ended up leaving uh, working for someone else and started my own company, where at first I started doing a lot of technical training for companies like Pluralsight and things like that. But, uh, but it, it evolved into what I found was the most, most important need. Uh, now, now when people ask me what I do, I, I tell them that I'm, I teach software developers how to be cool, <laughs> which, <laughs> which basically, you know, is, is personal development, soft, the soft skills, because, you know, in our industry, I think that a lot of developers, they develop very good technical skills, but they, they lack in the people skills they lack in sometimes uh, in the uh, the health and uh, you know personal development things that are really going to make you successful in your career. So that's really where I, I've kind of taken this really big shift in my career from software developer and software development into teaching software developers these other things. But uh, but I still have my hand a little bit in the in the test automation from time to time because that was one of my my big passions and uh, and and when I did get out on my own, a lot of people paid me to do consulting to help them build automation test frameworks and, and things like that. So, Okay. Yeah, I'm completely with you on the soft skills. In fact, um, I show my students a stat every semester that something like 82% of hiring managers and recruiters say that they can actually find the people with the technical chops, but the communication, the soft skills, the things that you're focusing on is actually where they really struggle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, you know, I think software development itself, like the, the ability to program is really becoming more of a commodity. Uh, and, and that's, you know, the reason why is you can go the world marketplace here, right? You could hire someone literally from India, Russia, from all over the world who has really good programming skills at this point. But what they usually lack, the thing that sets apart software developers in the U.S. that want to get jobs and be successful is the communication skills and the ability to not, not only like understand what's being said, but to communicate their ideas, express them well, to form teams, leadership, all of those things that are really important to organizations. So it's really hard. It's easy to find the technical talent. It's difficult to find someone that can bridge the gap and can do both. I violently agree. Uh, let's talk a bit about automated testing because uh, it sounds like it's an area of expertise of yours. Uh, what are some of the major tools that are out there these days? So there's there's quite a bit out there right now uh, as far as automated testing, depending on what you're, what you're trying to test. So just about every single type of software has some kind of automated testing. What's probably the most popular right now or, or today, it's been popular for, for quite a while for web development because a large amount of code today is web development, is a, a tool called Selenium. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, using something to drive that. So, so what Selenium is, is it's basically an, a, an automated testing framework that allows you to interact with the browser programmatically in order to manipulate the browser to get results from that so that you can write essentially scripts that would would be would be able to automate the, the testing of that and then check the results. Now, um, there's various tools uh, in every single development environment that allow you to drive a framework like that. Those are, are called drivers. So, for example, for JavaScript, one popular one is called Jasmine. Hmm. Um, but just about every language has some kind of a driver. And there's a few other frameworks that are, are similar to Selenium. You know, there's there's equivalents on the, let's say you're doing Windows desktop development. There's equivalents that work on Android or iOS. But uh, the basic idea is, is still the same, is that somehow you need, in order to do automated testing, Hopefully, you need some kind of tool that's going to allow you to programmatically manipulate the, U the UI of the application. Because when you do automated testing for, for a large part of it, you want to actually be using the application as a user. 
Um, so, so that's really what most of the the tools focus on. But, uh, but they just they vary from you know technology. Okay. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about a specific project in which you worked and automated testing played a key role? Sure. So one of the one of the big ones that I can think of is working for. I did a a, a large government project to. Uh, to re rebuild a, a huge health and welfare system for for the state of Idaho, and uh, in that project, it was a huge huge code base that we were converting from an old mainframe and COBOL system to a Java system, hmm. and uh, and we did this on a Scrum team, right? And so one of the big issues that we had was there was a lot of existing functionality in the system. In fact, you know, every single thing that we created in the new system when we're converting this over has to be regression tested, right? And so it would have taken a massive team of testers to manually run regression tests every single iteration or sprint. So what uh, what I ended up doing was I ended up uh, building up an automation testing framework that allowed us to very easily create tests that were of the same kind or category uh, and so that we could we could rapidly create these tests and then and then run those and so that that saved us a huge amount of time because now instead of trying to manually test uh, things every single re- possible regression we could run these automated test suites we could automatically run them it was it was web based so in the browser we used Selenium and we could be sure that stuff that was already working didn't break and then we could also test to make sure that anything that we converted in the old system worked in the new system. Hmm. It's interesting, when I did software development and implementations in the late 90s through the 2000s, they were all large-scale ERP projects. Mm. Because of that, we almost always used the waterfall method. So I hadn't even heard of the term regression testing until I started studying Scrum, because why would you test something else as the testing happens in the testing phase? Right. Whereas with Scrum, they, you know, with the Kanban boards in theory, they should be testing it all the time, which underscores the need for regression testing. Exactly, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's interesting that governments are getting on board with it because, in my experience historically, they tend to be a little late to the game. Um, given that, um, are there some industries that have been still a little bit lagging when it comes to automated testing, or is that ship pretty much sailed? I think it's. I think it's not really industry specific. I think it has more to do with the methodology, right? So, like you said, if you're on a waterfall project, there's still a lot of companies that do waterfall development. Automated testing doesn't have as much of value because if you're doing testing in the testing phase, you may still have regression tests when you after you ship the product and then you're making revisions or doing bug fixes, but then it's fairly easy to manually run through all the tests. Or I mean, it might not be easy, but it's it's not as much of a pain. But if you're doing an agile methodology, if you're doing Scrum, you know, or Kanban or some kind of agile methodology, you quickly feel the pain. In fact, it's it's almost impossible to really properly do agile methodology, at least in my opinion, without having automated testing, because there's no way that you're regression testing everything in the system for, for any kind of large-scale software project. So I think it's more based on the, the methodology, really, than the industry itself. Uh, and, and I actually think a lot of, it, it's still, there's still just this great need out there, because a lot of companies don't, don't know that they need this, and they don't really understand you know, what, what the value and benefits are. Are, are of it. So I ended up coming into a lot of organizations, uh, both as a developer and as a consultant, and coming in there and basically building the whole automation testing framework and, and system because no one else really knew how to do it or, or really saw the value in it. And, and it, it, it's kind of scary <laughs> to think that so much software is being built without a safety net underneath because how do you know that the stuff doesn't break? And, and then frequently it does. And so it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely a place that we still need a lot of growth. And it's, and the, one of the reasons why I, I think that is that this happens is because it is very difficult to understand. I mean, essentially, what you have to do to do automated testing, if you're doing it properly, is you have to build an application to test another application, and then you write scripts that automate that application. You know, where where I think a lot of a lot of people just want to write scripts that test something, and that's not. There's a middle in in there, which is a framework that you build. That's actually an application designed to test the other application. Interesting stuff. Any other best practices or tips for getting started? So, so that's that's definitely definitely one of them for sure. Is you know the the first one is is that if you're going to do automated testing, 
one of the one of the key things that you have to do is you have to build an automated testing framework. You have to build some kind of a framework that is going to be a, a, serve as an app to test the actual app that's under test. Uh, and the reason why you have to do that is because it creates a, a level of abstraction between the tests mm. and the application. Because the application you know is going to change, right? And so if you know something's going to change and you build a bunch of endpoints that are connecting to this thing that you know is going to change, when it changes, all of those endpoints break. And so by creating an automation testing framework in between, it acts as an abstraction layer and a buffer. And so you've got your, your, your uh, test or your application under test. You've got your automation framework, and then you've got your tests. And your tests are all connected now to the automation framework. And the automation framework knows how to test the application. So when the application changes, which you know is going to happen, all you have to do is update the automated test, or the automation testing framework, and then the tests are still going to run because they're built along or they're built against that abstraction. So that's probably the key best practice. Uh, otherwise, if you don't do that, what ends up happening in, in most organizations is they build up a huge suite of tests, and then they they, they constantly break, <laughs> mm. and then they eventually abandon the automated testing completely because they say, well, we can't do automated testing because it's too much of a maintenance nightmare. So that, that's a big thing. Is um, And then you know the higher level principle of this is, is to say that if you're doing automated testing, make sure from the very beginning that you plan it in such a way that it's going to be maintainable, just like your code base has to be maintainable because it is, it is essentially code that you're maintaining. Because, and it's more difficult to maintain automated tests. But if you don't have that in mind from the beginning, uh, because of the sheer volume of tests that you'll end up creating, uh, you'll, you'll create a, a, a maintenance nightmare and headache for yourself, and it'll be worse than if you had never done automated testing in the, in the first place. Because once it gets abandoned, once people, I guess once people lose trust in tests, once they believe that, oh, this test always fails, <laughs> uh, that's it, you're done. Because it's so hard to gain that. It's like, it's like trying to gain someone's trust back, right? Mm -hmm. Once you've lost their trust, and you, you said, if you're known for, for never showing up on time, it's going to be really hard for them to believe you when you make you know, dinner reservations and, and you say, yeah, I'm going to be there at 9. They're like, well, okay, I guess I can show up at like 9.15 or 9.30 because I know, I know Joe's not going to be there, right? So it's the same thing with automated tests. It's like you've got to set it from the beginning so that you can maintain it. And when a test breaks, it has to be a big deal. It has to be treated seriously. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you'd want to take the same approach to developing an automated framework as you would with software. You want it to be cohesive. You don't want a whole bunch of one-off stuff that doesn't talk to each other. Exactly. Yeah, I would definitely say you want it to be cohesive, and and you want to build it so that so that it with change in mind, right? And especially with agile, the whole idea when you're doing agile development is that you're expecting things to change because you know they're going to change every two weeks. So, mm -hmm. well, what are some of the other things that stop organizations from embracing automated testing? I I, I would say that one of the big things is just, is a lack of knowledge, right? Just not knowing enough about automated testing. Uh, there's not a lot of experts out there, honestly. I mean, when I did consulting for automated testing, right, I'll, I'll tell you that companies were willing, gladly willing to pay me $300 an hour just to help them design an automated testing framework because there were so few people. So it's a really good opportunity for, for your students, if they want to get into this, uh, is to, to become experts in that, in that area. So I think that's one of the big things is that people don't know how to – how to do this and how to do it right, right? And because well, I know you just part, got their attention with three hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and and it can go up from there. I'm telling you that. Um, so that's uh, that. There's definitely uh, some value there, but um, mm -hmm. but yeah. So so they don't know, you know, how how to do it right, and and they can't find the people. And and the re one of the reasons why is because you have to, you you know, you have to be a good developer to develop an automated testing framework. But you also have to understand testing and the testing tools, right? So that's a, it's a it's a difficult combination to have. Um, and then the, the second thing I'd say is that a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of organizations don't want to do the investment. They feel like they don't have time uh, or or the or the the money because it takes some time to actually get this working and to get this working right, right? This is not something that you just to turn over overnight, right? If you're going to build an automated testing framework, if you're going to do it the right way. You're going to have to build that framework first, and that could take months to build depending on the size of the application, and that's not the test. Then you have to start writing the tests that work against that framework, and it's, it's a big investment. But, uh, but again, like I said, if you're doing agile development and you're not, if you don't have some kind of automated testing, you definitely have holes. There's, there's no way that you're running manual regression tests. for. I mean, and you can ask, or you know, and this is a good sales pitch if you're trying to market 
yourself as an automation testing expert and you want to come in and do some consulting for a company as you say, well, how do you regression test your stuff? And most companies are going to say, well, <laughs> we, uh, we, we just test the stuff that we think changed. And that's, you know, it's not a full regression test of the system. So usually it's investment. Usually it's like, oh, we, we, don't, we don't have the expertise and we don't have the time or the money to invest in this. But um, it's a pretty easy sell to see, you know, to, when you look at how many defects show up from regressions and how much money that costs. The company to, to say, well, if you invest some time in automated testing, you would save this money. You'd earn it back real quick. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship between automated testing and manual testing? Uh, from my understanding, just because you employ a framework doesn't mean that you always use it for everything. And there may be instances in which manual testing still makes sense. Yeah, so just like anything, I, I think you know there's a, a general rule of, of thumb, which is that you automate things that you do repeatedly, right? So the less that you run tests, the, the less need that they need to be automated. So, you know, one of the first things I do when I go into an organization to consult with them to set up automated testing, especially if they're very budget conscious and they, you know, they're, they're worried about how long it's going to take to build an automated testing framework and how much it's going to cost, is I go in and I automate the, the, what I call a smoke test, right? Which yeah. a smoke test is essentially a test, that, a battery of tests that you run to make sure that the thing isn't smoking, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? When you, when you turn it on, right, um, it comes from the old hardware days where, it, you know, smoke test would be, let's flip it on and see if smoke comes out, okay? Mm-hmm. And so that, that's the whole, whole idea. It's like if you have this very base level of tests that's a basic functionality that every single time that the application runs or has changed, that these, these 10 things should work. Otherwise, we're done. We can't even ship the product at all. We don't. There's no point testing further. Automating tests like that makes a whole lot of sense. That's like number one because you're, you're testing very core functionality that's going to be used all the time, right? Autom- automating some of the edge and corner cases, maybe not as much, and especially things that are difficult, right? So uh, one time I worked for Hewlett Packard, and we did a lot of testing on printers, okay? And there, there was a level to where we could automate things, right? And there was a level where it didn't make sense because everything is, is automatable, but not everything makes sense to automate. So right. we automated uh, the testing of the, the digital uh, proofs of the print. So within memory, when we were going to print a page, we automated testing of what is that rasterized image versus the master, right? And mm-hmm. we could compare you know, the, the two pictures programmatically. But what we didn't do is we didn't have the page come out of the printer, take a photo of it, right, <laughs> and then automate the, the testing. We still had to have someone manually look at the printout on the page and say, okay, does this match the master? It, it would, it's possible to automate it. You could have a, 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 you know, a photograph of the page. And you could figure out a way to programmatically do that, but it doesn't make sense in that case. So, so really, it comes down to you know figuring out what is the cost benefit of it, how many times is is the test run, um, and then and, and that's that's how you you can figure out. So, I, I I do I do think though that a lot of organizations still err on the side of too much manual. They say it's too hard to to automate this, but um, especially if you're doing uh, Scrum, you know, or, or Agile. I always recommend that you try to automate every single test before you write the code. So that's really, really test-driven development in my mind mm. is where you actually create automated tests. And the, and the reason for that has to do with you, you get a second benefit in this case is because if you have an automated test that you've written before you've even implemented the feature in the, the main product, you have an absolute uh, spec, right? Because a lot of specs are are soft specs because you you get told this is how it's supposed to work, but there's a lot of interpretation that goes on. And so, sure. you know, the tester says, "Hey, this is this is not how it's supposed to work." And then the product owner or the one of the business stakeholders says, "No, no it's supposed to work like this." And the developers implement something, and you go back and forth. But if you sure. have an automated test that you wrote before, you know, and and everyone agrees this is the pass fail criteria, it's absolute. Like this test either passes, it's either green or it's red. There's there's no in between. So I I like to emphasize doing the automated tests in, in that case because, simply because it drives the development in a very clear path. That's a great point because a lot of user stories are sometimes a little amorphous. And even within that, how would you know if it worked? And if you only think about acceptance testing till the very end, people could have very different thoughts about whether something truly works. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. I'll get you out of here on this, John. How can people find out more about you and what you do? 
So uh, easiest thing is probably if you go to simpleprogrammer.com, you can find all my my stuff. I don't um, I don't actually blog there very much anymore. Um, I'm more active on YouTube channel right now, so that's that's probably the best place to like find my latest stuff. Uh, that's what I've been I do about two to three YouTube videos a day actually. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash uh, simple programmer, you'll you'll find me there and and you'll find all kinds of I, I do a lot of crazy videos. So <laughs> yeah, I've seen a few of them. John, thank you so much for your time. I know my students will really enjoy it. Yeah, glad to help, Phil. <laughs>